Hey everybody, today we're going to do another on shape lesson, kind of building on the skills we've been working on the last couple of times to design a coaster or some kind of drink that could be a nice present for someone. And we have a laser machine, and so generally we cut these out of one eighth inch wood or one quarter inch wood. And we're going to be doing a circular pattern today. So when you look at this coaster, and other ones too, you'll see a lot of them, there's a, a pattern that looks like it may be rotated in a circular fashion um, around. So things like this. And so that's kind of what you're going to be learning. So try and take a few notes. And so today we're going to start off the same way we have been recently, where we're going to create a new document. And we're going to click the sketch button and click on the top plane and right after that we're going to zoom into the top plane by clicking the cube and clicking top. All right so I'm going to click the circle command first which you've already used in the past. Click on the origin, left click and make my circle. Next I'm going to dimension it I'm going to do four inches, but you can do something different if you want. So dimension tool, left click, four, enter. Next, I'm going to use the offset command, which we've done in the past as well. Offset, click the circle, and then I can hold on to this arrow with my left mouse button and I can have it offset inside or outside. I'm going to do it to the inside and you can just eyeball it or if you want you can click on the dimension here and you can type in um, some dimension that that you want. It's totally your call. All right next is I'm going to draw another circle about midway on this axis. So right about here, I'm going to left click and draw my circle. I'm going to use the offset command to draw it inside and if you want to move this circle up or down, that's where a dimension could help you. So if I click the dimension tool, if I want, I could click on here and the circle. And this dimension here would allow me to move the circle um, up or, or down. <clears throat> All right. So next thing is I'm going to go over a new command. About in the middle, there's a command. The icon looks like four squares, and it's called linear pattern. You'll notice that this command, as well as some other ones, there's a down arrow key, which means that there's some similar commands that you can pick from. So there's also one called circular pattern and transform. So I'm going to pick the one called circular pattern. And you should write that down. It's really important. Circular pattern. And I'm going to tell the computer what I want to pattern. So I'm going to click on this outer circle and the inner circle. And then a couple things happened here. It gives you a preview and it says 3x. And if I double click the 3x, I could type in 5, enter on the keyboard. I could type in 8. See how that looks. I could type in 20. Uh, not so good. So pick a number that you think looks good. This is 6. I think it looks fine. So now to end this command, what you should do is you should click out here away from it, just in kind of a blank area. <clears throat> All right, next thing is I'm going to use the line command and I'm going to draw a line that's 
up here like that. And I could mirror it, but I told you I'm just going to teach you one new command today and just try and keep it a little more simple. Now, if you want them to be symmetrical, that's where dimensions could help. So I could click on my dimension tool and click this point and this axis here, and I'll make it be about a quarter of an inch. I'll click on the dimension tool. I can make this one be the same. And I could click on here. Make this be the same. Again, your dimensions could be different. But I'm just trying to show you how I'm just trying to get more practice using all the tools we've, that we've done so far. All right, so now I'm going to do a second, a second circular pattern. So just like before, I'm going to go up and press circular pattern. I'm going to click on this line and this line. Now what's a little confusing here is that there's a 3x here. This is the one I want to look at, but if you're too zoomed in, you might, you might not see that up there. And if you double click 6x, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the number of circles you have. So it's important to zoom out and make sure that you can see this 3x. I'm going to type in 6, so I have the same number as before. And so now I have that. I can click over here in the in the white area to end the command is one way to do it. So now what I'm going to do is do use the trim tool, which we've used in the past as well. And I'm going to trim these lines. And as I do this here, it's hard sometimes for new students to think about, you know, when this is cut out, what's going to be, what's going to drop out and fall, fall to the ground, and what's going to stay. And so we're going to be talking about that, but I'm going to be trimming all these inner parts like this. And if you make a mistake, you just press the Control Z key. So for example, if I click this line here, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Press Control Z or hit the undo key. And then you just keep, keep going at it here. All right, so I believe I have everything trimmed that I want to trim. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some text here. So I'm going to go to my text tool. So left click on my text tool. And you'll notice that if I draw in, if I hold my left button, if I hold my left mouse button inside of this area, I can kind of draw some text in a certain area. And if I, before you hit the green checkbox, I want you to change your font to be the stencil font. And so there it is. The stencil font is really good when you want to cut out letters. Now, if I want to move this, we've already talked about this before, but if I want to move it, you definitely can with the dimension tool. So if I click on right here and the top of my dimension, I could put in a number that's larger or smaller and it'll move. I could also dimension the left or right side. Okay, so I got everything the way I like. The next thing we're going to do right now is called the extrude command. So if I click on the extrude button, which is right over here, 
And after a second, something happened. If you rotate using the arrow keys on your keyboard or your mouse wheel, I'm sorry, your right mouse button, you can see that it's um, very 3D. It wants to do it one inch, but I'm going to change that to be one eighth of an inch, so 0.125. And I'll press enter. Now, why why do this? The reason why this is a good idea is because it really lets you see what your part's going to look like, what's going to fall away, what's going to be your actual, um, in this case, your coaster. Now, some of you are going to have trouble doing this. It's not going to work. And, you know, we're beginners right now at this stage, so if it doesn't extrude, don't worry about it. But let me show you a couple of things. So on your sketch, maybe you didn't trim everything correctly. Maybe you have some double lines. Maybe you have lines that run in and over each other. Those are all reasons why it might not let you extrude. But it should be, if you have it designed correctly, that when you go to the extrude button, that it'll just basically uh, do it. And then I can help troubleshoot, if you're having trouble with that, why, why it's not working. Um, so here's this extrude I have, and um, it's looking good. Don't forget that if you want to make a change to a sketch, you can double click it, make some changes. Like if I want this text to be closer, I could do make a change. And then up here, the green checkbox saves my changes. The X cancels them. So you can easily make a change there. And same with the extrude. If I double click it, hey, I'm going to do this out of quarter inch wood. So 0.25. So it's really easy to make um, a change to a sketch and extrude. We're trying to keep this project to be one sketch only and one extrude. All right, so that's it for today's uh, lesson, which was a lot of review and, and one new command, which was that circular pattern. All right, thanks for watching.